Welcome to Gazroth Tutorials. I'm Gazroth, and today we're going to take a look at the new time code blocks. So, in this tutorial, I have used every single part of the two time code blocks. We have our current date and time, and we have our current timestamps. So, what we have here is we have our milliseconds, our seconds, our minutes, hours, day of the week, day of the month, month, and year. And then here we have our current minute timestamp. Now these, this is how many minutes have gone by since I want to say the like midnight New Year's Day or Eve day, Eve, one of the two. And then this is the same thing with hours and then this is the same thing with days. So here I created a clock and we have our hour, minutes, and seconds. Then we have our date, so it's the 27th of August, 2022. And then I have it set to display Saturday and the month of August. And notice how it says 1559. So that is almost four o'clock p.m. And the thing is, it is 10.59 a.m. my time. So this must go off server time. I have changed the script to local and it still displays as 15. I don't know how we can change that to go off of like the headset. So it must be set to server time. Let's go into our script here. And I have this, this kind of very elaborate script to get everything going. So I have an index variable. I have two string variables. I have two string list variables to house all the different months and days. And then I have a object variable for every different text box. So these are all different text boxes. And I have them running in an update loop. Under operators, all the way down is where we're going to find our time code blocks. We get current date and time and current timestamp. Now the current timestamp is from beginning of year and then current date and time is right now. I have display current timestamp for days as string on days and we can change this to minutes, hours, or days. I have it here for hours and minutes. If we scroll down we have our get date and time year as string on year and we can change this to milliseconds seconds minutes hours day of the week day of the month month and year now these are all number variables so if you want to display it like i have you have to put it in a, as a string which you can find under values and then right here typecasting we can change a variable as a string we scroll down and i have the code for my clock so these two displays are going to be the time and the date scroll in here so i have display current date and time hour as string with a semicolon i think it's called a semicolon and we have our minute as string and then we have our second as string and we're setting that to our current time and then I have the same thing but for our day of the month we have a slash our month a slash and then our year on our current date and that's updating those two lines of code are updating this and this now to get it to display an actual word is a little more challenging. I had to create the lists and then we're going to loop through the list. So while index is less than eight, you could use less than or equal to seven because there's seven days in the week. If index equals current date and time of day of week, which if we go over here is six, zoom in, we are going to set day string to get item index minus one from days. Now the reason we have to do minus one is because our lists start with zero. So if we grow down a Saturday, it's a five, but our day of the week is a six, so we have to subtract one. Now we're gonna set our index to index plus one so we can loop through it and keep increasing until we match. And then we're gonna reset our index. And then we're gonna do the same thing but with the month, so again, index is less than 13, or you could do less than equal to 12. If index 
equals current day and time of month, which is, if we go over here, 8. We are going to set month string to get item index minus 1 from months, and we're going to display day string plus an empty, I have a tab in here, plus the month string on date, and then we're going to set our index to index plus one. Now, if this were to change, we need to bring one down here also to reset our index. The unfortunate thing is this is gonna happen every time. This is always running because it's in the update. We could add a separate function and then do a check to prevent it from going through these loops over and over again. But for this purpose, it works just fine. And now we have a fancy clock that'll give us our time, our date, and then our date. I also have it set to, I don't, I haven't looked at this yet, so we're just going to take a look. Where's the environment? And I'm going to set it to midnight black. So our clock glows and it can be seen at, at night. Now I'm going to be creating this as an asset and if anybody is interested and wants a copy of this clock, you're more than welcome. Just let me know in the comment section below. I'll change that back to, and I'll add you as a collaborator so you can pull that asset. You'll get the, the clock, you'll get the script. However, this script will be slightly modified. I'll add the checks in here and I'll get rid of all this display because you don't need all this stuff running for the clock. You just need from here down and then I'll add a check in here to prevent this from running over and over again. And that is it for the time code block tutorial. I appreciate you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, concerns, or ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you liked the video or if it helped you out with these new time code blocks, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I put out new videos. I usually come out with a video about once a week. At least I try to. Sometimes I go a little over, sometimes I'm a little under. But once the once fall starts to get going, I think I'll have a lot more time to put out new videos. And uh, yeah, have a good one.